Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, subscribe to be notified as soon as I upload a new solved past paper video with simplified explanations. Don't forget to like and comment. I'll be glad to answer any doubts. Alright, so, let's get started. Antibiotic resistance is an increasing problem worldwide. Erythromycin is an antibiotic. Figure 3.1 shows the daily doses of erythromycin per 1,000 people over a 13-year period. The number of bacterial infections resistant to erythromycin per 1,000 people is also shown. Okay, so the bar graph displays the correlation between daily doses of erythromycin 1.5 per 1,000 people and number of bacterial infections resistant to erythromycin per 1,000 people. Calculate the percentage change in the number of bacterial infections resistant to erythromycin per 1,000 people between 1993 and 1995. Give your answer to two significant figures. So the formula for percent change is final minus initial divided by initial multiplied by 100. So final is 100. Initial is 180. It's literally simply reading off the graph. Now 100 minus 180 divided by 180 multiplied by 100 will give. I'm just gonna plus this into my calculator. Right, so negative 80 divided by 180 and multiplied by 100 would equal to minus 44.444 percentage, which is negative 44% to two significant figures. Describe the data shown in figure 3.1. Right. So, whenever you are asked to describe data from a graph, be it line, bar, histogram, whichever, the first and simplest observation you can make is when is the graph peaking for the chosen variable. Such as in this case, if we look back at the graph. For daily doses of erythromycin per 1,000 people, these are the dark bars it's given in the key. So, the highest dark bar is in 1989 at 2.8. Therefore, we can state that daily doses of erythromycin peak in 1989 at 2.8 doses per 1,000 people. Now, if we have a look at the lighter bar, that's representing the number of bacterial infections resistant to erythromycin per 1,000 people. This peaks in 1993 at 180. Now, use the correct axis. Remember, it's 180, not 2.7. So we can say that. The number of bacterial infections resistant to erythromycin peak in 1993 at 180 per 1,000 people. Notice that the lighter bars only appear from 1991. Therefore, we can also state that there is no record of bacterial infections resistant to erythromycin until 1991. Suggest reasons for the change in the number of bacterial infections resistant to erythromycin from 1993 to 1995 shown in figure 3.1. Okay, so clearly it is reducing from 1993 to 1995. Now why do you think bacterial infections resistance decreased? Well, firstly we can assume that well, a general understanding and awareness spread about overuse of antibiotics causing antibiotic resistance. This means that fewer doses of erythromycin were used. You can also see that from the graph. Now as the world is advancing, there is better healthcare and prevention so people can be checked for the disease early on and if infected then quarantined in order to reduce spread of disease. The development of herd immunity due to vaccination could be another potential explanation for the observed decrease in resistant infections despite increased erythromycin usage. Herd immunity occurs when a significant portion of the population becomes immune to a particular infectious disease, either through vaccination or prior infection, reducing the likelihood of disease transmission within the community. Explain how bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. Within a population of bacteria, random mutations in the genetic material can naturally occur during replication or due to exposure to various environmental factors, including exposure to antibiotics. These mutations lead to genetic variations among bacteria. Bacteria that happen to possess mutations providing resistance to the antibiotic are more likely to survive when exposed to the antibiotic treatment. As a result, they have a higher chance of reproducing compared to non-resistant strains. Through reproduction, the bacteria carrying the resistant gene or allele pass on this advantageous trait to their offspring. 
As resistant bacteria survive and reproduce, the frequency of the resistant allele or gene within the bacterial population increases over successive generations. Natural selection favors the survival and reproduction of bacteria possessing antibiotic resistance. In an environment where antibiotics are present, these bacteria are better adapted to survive and proliferate compared to non-resistant strains. Over time, the resistant strains become dominant in the bacterial population due to their increased survival fitness in the presence of the antibiotic. Bacteria are prokaryotes. State two features of all prokaryotes. Circular DNA. Remember, prokaryotic cells do not have a distinct membrane-bound nucleus. Instead, their genetic material, consisting of a single circular chromosome made of DNA, is found freely floating in the cytoplasm. Prokaryotes have a simple cellular structure without complex categorization. They lack membrane-bound compartments or organelles, except for some structures like ribosomes, cell wall, cell membrane. Prokaryotes contain ribosomes, which are responsible for protein synthesis. These ribosomes are smaller in size compared to eukaryotic ribosomes. Many prokaryotes have a cell wall providing structural support and protection to the cell. The composition of the cell wall varies among different types of prokaryotes, such as peptidoglycan in bacteria and other unique substances in archaea. Prokaryotes reproduce asexually through a process called binary fission, where a single cell divides into two identical daughter cells. Prokaryotes are mostly unicellular organisms, so we could go with cell wall and ribosomes. Some bacteria have a flagellum. State the function of a flagellum. The main role of the flagellum is to enable bacterial movement, i.e., locomotion. All right, so here we reach the conclusion of this part of the video. I will be posting the next part shortly. You can visit the entire playlist, and if you have trouble with selective questions, you can watch accordingly. I try to provide detailed but easy to understand explanations so that everyone can follow along and understand the concepts. Thank you for watching. Please like if you found the video helpful and subscribe for more.